Hi, it's Ingrid Blackburn. Thanks for joining me today. And we're gonna do some watercoloring. I have some great bold stamps from a couple of the different stamp sets in the New Lovely Notes Stamp of Approval collection. We're gonna emboss these first, and then we're gonna do some resist watercoloring using some distress inks. So why don't we get started? Today I thought we'd do a fun, simple color wash, but I thought we'd use some colors that maybe you wouldn't normally think of. So to get started, I have a piece of 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. I'm gonna take a de-static tool and just get it coated really well. We're gonna be using black embossing powder, so I'm gonna try and limit the amount of little pieces that get left behind. And I have several of the, uh, several of the bold sayings from a couple of the stamp sets from the new stamp of approval, the Lovely Notes collection. And I have a couple of like little tiny little stamps from one of the stamp sets in there just to kind of give it a little bit of interest. Now because this is so large, I'm gonna go ahead and use a foam pad so that I get a really good image here. I'm gonna use VersaFine Onyx Black Ink. Get that nicely coated. I want to get a good impression, so I'm going to give it a chance to transfer to the paper, putting down a fair amount of pressure, especially in the center. Now, normally when I do embossing like this, I like to use clear powder, but since we're going to be adding a lot of dark brown around this, because we're going to keep this very neutral piece, I want to use black emboss embossing powder because it'll really stand out and it will make a more of an impact. Now that I have a little tiny stray black pieces removed, I'm just going to heat set this. Watercolor paper does not like weird things like excess water or heat, so it likes to warp. So I definitely encourage you to do this from both sides. It'll make it a lot easier on your paper and you'll have less warping than you would normally without it. So now that I've heat set my embossing powder, I have some painter's tape that I've attached to the very bottom of my piece, and I have another piece here that I'm gonna do to the top. And I'm just kind of getting it right on the edge. I'm not really looking to secure it a crazy amount, just a little tiny bit. I'm just gonna press down my piece, try to get it as flat as possible so that that tape just kind of holds it in place. You can see that from the heat embossing, it's a little tiny bit bowed. Watercolor paper reacts a much differently than regular cardstock. It really doesn't like heat embossing. So I have four different distress colors here. I have ground espresso, vintage photo, gathered twigs, and rusty hinge. Now the key to this is to try to keep some of the light with the dark. I have a large paintbrush, and this is a 14 inch uh, watercolor brush. So I'm just gonna get some of this ink down. And the key for me is to always kind of keep my little spots right next to what it is I have down, especially when they start to look a lot alike, very important. So I'm gonna take a paper towel and just kind of keep that in one hand. I'm gonna have a wet brush, and I'm gonna start with my lighter shades, and that's gonna be more my rusty hinge. I'm gonna take a little bit of water off here so that it's not crazy, crazy wet. And I'm just gonna add some rusty hinge to both corners. And this is just gonna kind of help to keep my project a little light. Not gonna worry about getting any harsh lines or anything like that at this point. And then from there, we're gonna go into the vintage photo, which is a really nice warm brown, very antique looking, has a nice hue. And don't worry if these don't look like you're, you have them in your head, you're gonna come back and put a little more color into it. And then from the vintage photo, I'm gonna go into the gathered twigs and add that right here. I'm gonna kinda leave this corner exposed and add a different color right there. But here I'm gonna start to just kinda blend these colors today together. Now if it's crazy, crazy wet, it's gonna kind of explode into there. And to, to help deal with that, you just take a little water off your brush and let's see if I can't get it to do it. I probably can't just because I want it to, but you can see how the water's kind of moving. If it's moving in a direction that you don't want, just remove a little 
water from your brush and come in and just kind of blend them together. And that will help to keep it from going a little more out of control. Add a little more, let me clean this brush off. So I've got a lot of different browns in there. And let me actually remove that. Add a little more rusty hinge down. And I'm just gonna kind of have that go a couple different places here. I'm gonna take some of this darker ground espresso and we're gonna add that here in the center. Just kind of combining with some of these colors. And I'm gonna add a little tiny bit here in the corner. I like having some of the colors in different spots. It kind of makes it an interesting blend. Add a little more vintage photo here. Also bring in the color tea dye would be another light color that you could work with. Just kind of just trying to keep this brown and neutral. I was thinking coffee. So that's what led me to all the browns today. And you know, there's some colors that you may not usually use. We tend to go towards all the brights all the time. So sometimes it's kind of fun to work with different color palettes. And you can see now what I'm doing is I'm just dropping in extra color. So I'm gonna pull some strength here from that, just to kind of punch this up a little, make it a little more vibrant, and kind of blend these together a little bit more. grab some of this gathered twigs here and you can see I came in with a really wet brush because I got a really hard line here so I want to really kind of work that out let's remove some of the water here I'm just kind of just bringing my I'm kind of scrubbing here and that's gonna help remove that hard line that I got I'm trying to avoid as much as I can this is a really pretty color, color gathered twigs. It's really the color of, if you were to pick up a, a wooden twig off the forest floor, that is the color of this distress ink. It's rather pretty. I think we're kind of getting to a point where I'm pretty happy with this. Let's kind of strengthen a couple of the colors in a little couple little spots. And then I think we're pretty much done. It's very easy to overwork this. And I'll show you a couple. I overworked one, one of my projects <laughs> as I was just kind of playing around before filming this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick this up and because this is so close to the edge, chances are it'll come off. Usually it doesn't, usually it sticks to it and you have to remove it after it's dry. And when you do remove your tape, you want to pull away from your project, uh, but generally I would recommend that once your project is somewhat dry. Because you don't want to tear your paper. This was actually the first piece that I did and this one's already cut down. And you can see how much uh, lighter it is actually in, in color. I, I didn't quite take it to the same depth of hue here. And I, I kind of like how it's got just a little tiny bit of brown there. I was trying to emulate that. I didn't quite get the lightness that I was, I was going for in here. I kind of overdid it a little bit. Both of them look great. This one actually was misstamped and you can see when I stamped it the first time, I actually missed the bottom part of the word because I didn't press down hard enough. And that's where that foam pad comes in handy. I didn't use that the first time I did this. So I ended up double stamping it and you can see that it has a really nice cool shadow effect. I had done this one in Versamark versus the Versafine Onyx Black Ink. And uh, both of them have the black embossing powder. Now this one completely got away from me. This one's a little too dark. Now it doesn't mean I can't use it. I'm still gonna use it. But you can see what a big difference in contrast it is. You know, three different ones, three very different looks. 
they all kind of have their own unique character. But the black really stands out. I love the black embossing powder. Now here is one that I did in a kind of a rainbow color. And this is really cool. I love this look. But you can really see here that this was done with clear. And this is where you really notice it. I'm just going to compare the two and really bring that up up close. You can see how glossy and shiny, shiny black this is, how it really pops. This one is black VersaFine Onyx Black ink with the clear embossing powder. And the clear embossing powder is awesome. I love that because I don't get any stray little black flecks. I did a good job of getting rid of all the black flecks there. But you can see how it doesn't have the same punch and pop that that black does here. So. Lots of different options. So stay tuned. I've got a couple close-up pictures here so you can see what these look like as finished cards. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you learned a little something. I look forward to seeing you in another video soon. If you haven't already subscribed, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and definitely give me a thumbs up if you like this video. I would definitely love to keep creating great content for you. Till next time. Bye-bye.